So we're now joined by Dr. C.K. Narayan, Managing Director of Growth Avenues, to share his view on the Nifty Breakdown. Uh, appreciate you joining us here. Are you on the Morgan Stanley side or are you on the UBS side, Mr. Narayan? Well, uh, I think everybody would love to be on the Morgan Stanley side, right? We are all basically bulls at heart uh, suffering through a reaction at the moment and uh, we are all wishing that it would go away and the naysayers would actually stop speaking and we'll have more rhythm this size on the air and we'll try to talk the market up. I think wouldn't that be just wonderful? Right? Uh, he, he tried but his best, didn't he? But didn't really succeed today. The markets today. have taken a bit of hype. Yes, they have taken a bit of a hit and today a significant know, one at an eight. Uh, I said uh, Rhythm tried his best to talk up the markets today but didn't really succeed. Uh, we've got a 470 point cut on the Sensex and the Nifty below 8,000 uh, at an eight month low. Uh, how much further do you see this market correcting and what would you attribute today's sharp sell off to? Well, I think if you were to take the day as such, uh, uh, what I would reckon is that uh, that very sharp rally which we saw on Wednesday probably led to most of the shorts getting closed out and some amount of adventurous buying which had probably come in. As a result of which the market was a bit hollow when there was no follow-up buying in the morning. And uh, when, you know, yesterday's buyers actually started bailing out, and this brought the short sellers back in. There was absolutely no cushion uh, to really, uh, you know, kind of stagger the fall as it went along. And then later on, it was just a kind of a, let's say, falling domino, which uh, took force as the day wore off. And then we, you know, finished up near the end of the day. So it was nothing out of the ordinary. It was just that the market was a bit hollow because of all the shorts getting closed out. And uh, the shorts got replaced. Some amount of extra selling came in. I think we just finished a uh, little worse off for the day. So what do we do in a market like this? Uh, is this a good time to uh, pick, select stocks that look attractive at these levels or do you stay away till things stabilize for the markets? Well, I think, uh, you know, that would be a two-part answer. Now, if you were to look at somebody who has a pretty long-term view, then uh, very clearly they need to... Uh, you know, slowly funnel their money into the market as it were. Having slipped below 8,000 and with the probability that we may slip a further two, 300 points down and if somebody has a sizable portfolio or a sizable amount of money to put into the market, then I think they should begin probably from somewhere around 7,900 and look to buy at every 100 point drop. So that would be some uh, a kind of strategy for a longer pull trader or a longer right. pull investor. But for those who are engaged in the shorter term, I think they should stay away because this market on the downside certainly seems to have a lot of momentum, A, and B, mm -hmm. there seems to be a complete lack of any buying interest even at lower levels. So which means that even though the market may stop falling, it's not going to get up. So when you buy stocks, you want to see that they start moving up. Uh, if that is not going to happen in a hurry, those who are shorter term oriented are much better off waiting for you know, the bottom to be formed and the reversal to take place and to buy during that next strike, you know, rather than okay. try to buy it during the fall. So you're very clear that this is not the bottom as, uh, as of now, but uh, from a long-term investor's point of view, you said that if uh, they do have a long-term investment horizon, they could look at entering the market. What is it that you would advise? What's looking good? What sectors, what stocks would you advise getting into at these levels? Well, I think I would remain very selective at the start because uh, there isn't any particular sector which is being favored by the market. There is no leadership in the market right now, so it has to be a very, uh, very, very stock-specific approach. Within that, uh, what I would look at is wherever, uh, you know, the results have not been half as bad as, being, as they had been expected. Uh, within that, I would classify something like BHEL, etc., Mm -hmm. Or I would take something which has actually surprised the street. Uh, within that space, I would probably look at maybe something like a Voltas or, you know, maybe a couple of pharma names which have actually done uh, fairly well and, uh, you know, kind of beaten the street expectation. So I would mix it up between uh, the big players. I would buy into capital goods stocks because after a very, very long time, I'm seeing positive traction in the capital goods sector, which is a very distinct change from uh, you know the past several years. So you have Larson and Tubro, 
which is at the head of the pack, and I think very, very good long-term patterns in Larson and Tubru. That is something I would recommend for long-term investors at the current price, at a drop of, let's say, 100 point from here as well. Buy into Siemens. I would look to buy BHEL, as I said. I would mm. uh, look uh, and look at Reliance. Uh, Reliance, of course, needs to get into that uh, you know four-digit space for it to get or uh, kind of regain its old mojo back. Uh, when you see Reliance back in the thousands, I think right. a lot more people would actually crowd over to that particular stock. But right now, Reliance uh, maybe around here or at a little lower level. I would definitely look at Reliance as well in oil and gas. HPBP would be the other two stocks to look at okay. in oil and gas space. So these are some of the places that I would definitely visit. All right, those are some of the places that you would uh, bet your money on given the volatility in the market, but you do expect the, the markets perhaps to drift lower. Uh, there is no buying support, as we've been pointing out, coming in, and uh, perhaps we could see the markets uh, below the 8,000 level, which is where we ended for the day. CK Naran, always a pleasure speaking with you. Appreciate you joining us here on the CNBC TV 18 Market Report.